We're still waiting for the Industrial Revolution to reach some large parts of the world 250 years after. The internet maybe took 30 years, uh, maybe the cloud and mobile took 15 years, and now I think we're talking months. Hello and welcome to another video. Here's another clip from Davos 2023 with the CEO of Microsoft on the use cases of ChatGPT from Silicon Valley to rural India. And what he is highlighting here is in regards to how artificial intelligence can solve the problem of digital inequality. And I think that this is really something amazing. Take a listen at what the CEO of Microsoft discussed in regards to this at Davos 2023. I'll give you another anecdote, which for me perhaps was the most revealing of what can happen. I was in India uh, at the beginning of uh, January, and I saw this uh, demo, Klaus. In India, one of the things that's very exceptional that's happening is digital public goods that are getting built for identity, payment, many systems. And one of the digital public goods that's getting built is for language translation, right? So they basically they have an open source project so that anybody building any application in India can translate between any language in Indian, any Indian language. So a demo I saw was a rural Indian farmer trying to access some government program, right? So he just expressed a complex thought uh, in speech in one of the local languages that got translated and interpreted by a bot and a response came back saying go to a portal and here is how you'll access the program. He said look I'm not going to go to the portal I want you to do this for me and it completed it and the reason why it was able to complete it was because it they had that a developer building it had taken GPT yeah. and trained it over all of the government of India documents and then scaffolded it with the speech recognition software. So think about what that meant, right? That basically meant that a large model, a foundational model that was developed in the West Coast of the United States a few months before, had made its way to a developer in India who then sort of added value to it to make a difference in a remote villager's life. And I've never seen that type of diffusion. To your point about the Industrial Revolution, Klaus, you know, I would say, you know, we're still waiting for the Industrial Revolution to reach some large parts of the world 250 years after. The internet maybe took 30 years, uh, maybe the cloud and mobile took 15 years, and now I think we're talking months, which to me, I think is perhaps the benefit. Doesn't mean to your core question, we shouldn't take something like AI safety yeah. as a core consideration right you know, at the design time. And so therefore, even when we launched these APIs, which we did this week, uh, one of the key things is the APIs have safety built into it for harmful content or the context in which they use. So a lot of work needs to go into it still, but we think of both the unintended consequences and the benefits both being something that we harness. The potential of artificial intelligence is undeniable in both the present and the future. India, as an early adopter of technology, has much to teach other developing countries in the tech space. And with a large untapped talent pool and a significant market, India and the entire subcontinent have a lot to offer the world. Digital transformation can greatly benefit these regions by solving traditional problems and streamlining legacy processes, like in the case of what is being discussed in this, in this video. And this is an awesome example of how technology is being used to change someone's life for the better. So tech for good is actually a good thing, right? And if technology is used for social good and impact, the world will advance much better considering the developments that have happened in recent years. And I am definitely for social good leveraging technology and this example is a great accomplishment in helping people even in rural areas. 